The European Union is an increasingly important actor in the field of conflict prevention. It can leverage diplomatic, development, humanitarian aid and peace building instruments to help prevent, mitigate or even resolve violent conflict alone or together with its member states. At the moment, these are the five conflicts where we believe the European Union can help bring about peace. In Myanmar, the increasing level of violence which followed the February 2021 military coup, coupled with increasing poverty and food insecurity, will likely prompt more violence and displacement in Myanmar and in the region alike. Despite having stopped direct aid to the government, the EU remains critically important to continue to deliver humanitarian and development relief to the population. Furthermore, it can play a critical role to support independent media, which are as important as ever at the moment, and it can maintain and expand the existing sanctions against the regime. In Yemen, the humanitarian catastrophe and one of the worst COVID-19 outbreaks so far have not prevented the parties from continuing to fight. And a new offensive in Marib is set to compound the situation even further. The European Union should continue to provide the utmost priority to increasing its humanitarian funding. It should use all of its global initiative to contain uh, COVID-19 as a way to reach to the parties and increase chances for successful mediation. And it should also support concerted diplomacy, ideally through an international contact group with the United Nations that can help uh, build uh, a ceasefire and also support the peace process. In Bolivia, there is still large disagreement over the uh, 2019 elections. In order to contain the risk of violence, the European Union should continue to provide critical support to help the country uh, face the risk of the pandemic, but also encourage the new government to launch a comprehensive reform of the judiciary and also keep supporting electoral authorities. At the same time, to support the prospect of national reconciliation, they should continue encouraging and supporting local dialogue initiatives. In Nigeria, Surging violence by armed groups and criminal gangs, coupled with poverty and worsening climate, is destabilizing the Northwest, uh, displacing hundreds of thousands and threatening other countries in the region. The European Union should continue to increase humanitarian support to, uh, uh, to help ease uh, the suffering, particularly of women who have been disproportionately uh, affected. It should uh, improve also training equipped to Nigerian forces, uh, provided that they are properly uh, vetted and it should also support reconciliation initiatives between herders and farmers' communities. Relations between the European Union and Russia are at an all-time low. In Ukraine, negotiations between Moscow and Kyiv have been stalling and the ceasefire agreed in July 2020 has already broken down. Despite all difficulties, there is a way forward to reduce tensions. Brussels should work with Washington and London to coordinate a common approach to deterrence in the face of future threats or actual aggressions in the Donbass. A common approach will also identify common incentives, such as, such as delineating and communicating a plan for gradual and reversible sanctions relief for Russia in response to measurable progress. The European Union should also encourage Ukraine and Russia and the forces it backs in Ukraine to return to the July 2020 ceasefire as a prelude to return to uh, diplomatic negotiations. At the same time, it should uh, engage to uh, uh, work out on a plan and, and support for the potential reintegration of uh, the Donbass in Ukraine. These are the five conflicts where we think that the European Union can play an important role to bring about peace.